Welcome back. We're investigating the church to see if there's a way into the tomb. So far, this elevator has proved unhelpful. Uh, it looks like we can get in through here as well, though. Hopefully this door is not locked. It isn't. Let's see. There's another door here. Presumably that leads to, leads to the interior of the church. No point. It's locked. Which is locked, so... Nothing we can do about that. Hopefully what we need is in here. Can't look at the table. What do we have here? Um, it's a Tomaton Jesus. Aha! And he is hiding a key, by the looks of it. Very cleverly hidden. Yep, just a key. To what, though? We don't need a key for the thing in the tower. We need something to put in the slot. Presumably not a key. I like she put it back. It's very nice of her. How about this set of drawers over here? I can't open it. Those appear to be locked. There's a keyhole here, so... That seems to have worked. It did. A punch card. Maybe that's what goes into the slot. This one's red, apparently. There is another one. Just some priest's outfits, otherwise. Nothing we're interested in. Presumably books used for sermons and stuff. Nothing here we can look at, except... It kind of looks like there's more to this drawer. It's definitely not as deep as some of the other ones. See, this one's much deeper. So I wonder... There's a weird... I don't know, valve on the side of the... of the cabinet? Aha! Two things here. A Vorlber key. Oh, we read about those in the flyer. Come in handy. And a note. To my successor, the Valadolin Parish Priest. The sanctity of confession is a sacred vow, so these revelations are the result of much soul-searching and reflection. One day in March 1938, Rudolf Vorlberg knocked at my door. I was a young priest then and was overawed by the dominant personality of the town's most important figure. I remember it was raining that day, and beneath his dripping hair, Monsieur Vorlberg's face was the very expression of eternal pain itself. Through gritted teeth, his eyes swimming with grief, he announced that his son Hans had just died. He wanted me to come immediately to bless the body. I entered the dark drawing room of the family house. Hans's coffin was set in the middle, sealed shut. Monsieur Vorlberg explained to me that he wanted no one to see the body of his son. Hans's badly mangled corpse had been discovered at the bottom of a precipice. It was presumed that he had slipped and fallen badly. Despite his 18 years of age, the young Vorlberg did not have all his faculties. I believed him. I let the funeral and officiated the mass and burial. 
We buried Hans Vorlberg with all the dignity and solemnity befitting such a tragedy. Life, indeed, hangs by a thread, and I would surely have forgotten this episode. Only several years later, after her father's death, Anna Vorlberg had an accident at the factory and nearly died. Such a close call with death seemed to awaken her a need to confess. What I heard that day would haunt my dreams thereafter. She told me that the body of her younger brother Hans was not at rest in the family tomb for the simple reason that he was still alive. I had blessed and sanctified an empty coffin. I had assisted and sanctioned a masquerade staged by Rudolf Vorlberg himself to exercise the blind hatred he felt for his son. His son had left and he felt betrayed. A man who preferred to believe and make others believe his son was dead rather than accept that this truth had shamefully deceived me. What kind of priest was I? And what kind of priest would I become? Our merciful Father alone will be my judge. It is my duty to inform you that one of your flock is still unaccounted for. I leave this terrible secret in your hands to do with what you will. Leon Bonnard, priest. I think he's being a bit hard on himself. It's not like he knew that it was fake. Why would he question the account that the Hans's dad gave to him? All right. More punch cards in these drawers. They didn't really store these well, did they? They're just all over the place. That's all the drawers. And we have four punch cards. Red, blue, purple, and a green, apparently. Not entirely sure what uh, those are going to be. Presumably they're for the thing in the tower. Don't think there's anything else here. So let's head back to the tower and see what we can do with that. Also wonder what that key is for. We haven't really seen anywhere we could use that. The door to the factory. That's the the one at the gate in the in the wall. Uh, looks like it needs the telescopic key, which is also what the notary told us. So what this one's for, we haven't really seen yet. Could have something to do with the tomb, but there was no obvious keyhole there. So let's head back up and see if we can use those punch cards. <whistles> All right, what's that going to accomplish? Let's try the red one first. Christmas has come early this year. Alright, um, so it's for the bells. I guess they've uh, automated their campanology. Um, so this one plays Silent Night. I wonder what the blue one does. That one's for weddings, I guess. Um, I'm actually going to try the green one first. Ah, 
I don't know what that's supposed to be, but it was annoying. <laughs> the people in town must be thinking, like, what on earth is going on here? Just randomly ringing the bells. And the last one we have left is the purple bunch cart, which is indeed the one we need, which I knew. You can't use any of the others after you use that one, which is why I used the green one first, so I could show you. I no longer need these punch cards. I guess somehow Kate is aware of what just happened. Maybe she was looking out the window and could see it. I don't know. So yeah, she discards all the punch cards so you don't get to try the last one if you did them in inventory order. But that did something. I guess that's the uh, funeral. No, it really doesn't look like there's a door on the back of that elevator there. Kind of weird. I guess they use that one for funerals. And it seems to have um, done something to the uh, Vorlberg th tomb. Which is kind of weird when you think about it. <laughs> You know, did he never have funerals for anybody else? Or did they only use this punch card for um, those... for funerals in the, the Vorlberg family? It's possible, I guess. Alright. Looks like he dropped his hat. If you think about it, we don't really even need to look in the tomb anymore. We've already confirmed that it's fake. At least the priest said so. Maybe that doesn't count as uh, proof. I need a key. Yes, this looks like a spot for a Vorlberg key. Which we found, so... Explains why they had it, I guess. And it opened the tomb. I don't think you can get the key back. Hopefully we won't need it for anything else. Is that supposed to say something? Can't really make that out. I don't think so. Unless the middle one says Joe, I, which I doubt. Alright, looks like there's a bunch of graves here. Isabel Vorlberg, 1522 to... That is impossible to read. 1556? That pr seems pretty short. Unless it says 1656 in case she was... In, the, in that case she was very old. I don't know. Anna Vorlberg, 19... 54 to 2002. What? Rudolf Vorlberg, I guess? That must have been their dad, based on the note. Pierre Vorlberg? I could not read that one. Jean Vorlberg, presumably his wife. Or his sister. I don't really know how this is laid out. Can't read that one either. And there's Hans. Who we kind of know is not here. Fortunately that opened really easily. And indeed it is empty. No reaction from Kate. 
1920 to 1938. That means that, assuming this is 2002, the game was released in 2003, but if it says Anna died in 2002, then I guess that that is the uh, current year. Did the newspaper say that? I don't remember. Um, it means he's 82. I guess he could still be alive. What do we have here, though? Piece of newspaper. Mountain fall kills a local figure. The Vorlberg family was struck by tragedy yesterday. Rudolf Vorlberg discovered the lifeless body of his son Hans at the bottom of a precipice. Loose rocks and poor visibility occasioned by the morning mist were probably the cause of the young man's fall. This is the theory put forward by the family, as there were no witnesses. Hans had just turned 18 years of age. Eight years ago, he suffered a, similarly, a similar serious accident from which he never fully recovered the full use of his mental faculties. Despite living almost as a recluse, he was still well no, a well-known figure, as the future of Vorlberg manufacturing lay in his hands. We at the Vela de Len Gazette wish to expand our deepest sympathy to his family and express our sincere condolences to Rudolf Vorlberg and his daughter Anna, who today becomes the sole inheritor of the automaton factory. Nice of them to write this in English, by the way, for a French town in 1938. Actually, I wouldn't do that in a French town now, I don't think. Um, and something else here, which is uh, Father the Land voice cylinder. Okay, no idea what that is. Is it like one of those old wax rolls? Doesn't look like it. And we can't close his, uh, his, uh, tomb. I guess there's no reason to. There's nobody in there. I guess that pretty much confirms that Hans is not dead, or at least he's not in his uh, grave. Should we, you know, tell somebody about that? You have reached Martin and Walmart Associates. We're sorry, but all our lines are busy. Please call back later. Okay, yeah. The, the game basically never has you call these unless it very explicitly tells you you should. So I will stop trying that, I guess. Most of the time, you get called. Okay, well that tells us something. I guess we don't really have the full story yet. So perhaps... Can we talk to this guy? Good morning. Good morning? What a pleasure to meet such a lovely young lady honoring our aging streets. Please, uh, please sit yourself down next to me so we can enjoy the air together. It would be a pleasure, but I'm afraid I don't have the time. Some other time, maybe. I hope so, miss. I remember when these streets were full of vibrant life. In those days, there was a charming encounter to be had round every corner. Ah, our good little town of Valadilene is not what it used to be. It looks like things have changed a bit around here. Our children have all left the valley. They need to earn a living, don't they? Can't really blame them. You have to move with the times, don't you? And it's not at the Vorlberg factory that they'll find jobs. <laughs> Being excluded from the world is not an easy burden to bear, believe you me, miss. But it's such a pretty little village. Uh, I can tell you're not from these parts. I hope you enjoy the pleasures that we still have to offer. 
Good day to you. All right, a little bit of background, I guess. I really would like to take a look at the factory, though. Which means I need to go over here. That's the factory building over there. Before we couldn't get in here, but we got this telescopic key from the uh, notary. All right. I guess that works because I already wound it before. All right. Let's see what we can find out about Hans and his possible location. And we have... Uh, Five ways to go. Well, four. One is the way we came from. Let's start over here, which I think is the direction of the factory. Vorlberg. Clear enough. Presumably, um, nobody's working today, considering this is supposed to be a time of mourning. Um, there are actually a bunch of different places you can go here. You can go up the stairs, you can go to the right, I think you can go down. Well, I mean, this may be the same direction, I'm not, not actually sure. And you can go to the left here. Let's go here. It does look to be deserted. Hopefully there's nothing dangerous in here. Oh. Yes, hello? Haven't you, my poor munchkin? I've been trying to contact you for hours. I'm in Europe, Ma. Job thing. What? Europe? My God. Oh, I've got such happy memories of Europe. Some of them even involve your father, but uh, that's enough of that. Tell me, where are you? Paris? London? Venice? Valadilen. Yeah, <laughs> I know. It's a bit out in the boonies. What in the world are you doing out there? You know, business. I've got to see through the takeover of some old family business that's got a few debts. It's a really charming place, but there's one or two weird things going on here. I, I can't go into it now. Oh, well, that's right. Your old mother's too dumb to understand it. You really do take after your father sometimes. Mother... Kate, you'll never guess who I saw yesterday? Ma, I haven't got a lot of time, you know. Frank! Ma, please, I've got to go. Frank! Frank Malkovich, the Russian opera singer. Well, maybe you don't remember him. He was quite a star in his day. Listen, Ma, I really don't have the time. I'll call you back. He is as charming as he always was. We spent the... Mom, I really have to go. I'll call you back, I promise. Lots of love. Kate! Don't blow your mom off like that. I guess she's busy. Also, I'm sure that story was not important at all. Um, let's see. What do we have here? Some kind of tunnel. I guess that's supposed to be an automaton, but to me it just looks like the falling man <laughs> from Mist. They're using on all these boxes. Ooh, and mechanical forklift. Ah, 
Okay. Okay, I guess it takes something from here and brings it to somewhere else. There was nothing for it to take, though. So that accomplished nothing. Alright, there's a door over here, though. Um... That's an automaton, I guess, hanging there. An anvil over here. Oh, that just went to the back. Not to the anvil. All kinds of parts. Which, you know, makes sense. We're in an automaton factory. Um, he's moving around a lot more naturally than anything else we've seen. Oh, many thanks indeed. I am most embarrassed for you to see me like this. I lack a certain completion. You see, nobody here found the time to polish off the finishing touches. Honestly, these days, we really have lost the art of good workmanship. Uh, yeah, maybe. With whom do I have the honor of speaking? Could you please state your identity, articulating clearly? My name is Kate. Kate Walker. Allow me to introduce myself. I am Model XZ2000. My common name is Oscar. I represent the technological zenith of this factory's production. I have been designed to drive a locomotive. A touch messy, but an essential task. Okay. It's a talking automaton. And keep in mind, there's no computer chips or anything supposed to be here. No, this is all just mechanical. <laughs> and somehow he seems to be able to ha hold a conversation better than even the best uh, AI assistant today. So, that's like world changing if they could actually do that. But no, they're just using it for to, to drive a locomotive, which, you know, is not like that's something people could do. Or something you could automate by itself. Fairly easily. Much more easily than building this thing. Oh well, I guess we just have to go with it. Have you logged my first and last name? Perfectly. Kate Walker. Pleased to meet you. Me too, uh, Model XZ-2000. Please, all my friends call me Oscar. This fad for cryptic names is such a bore. Could you imagine being called by your passport number? I suppose not, Mr. Oscar. Sir. Alright, Oscar it is. Do you know where I could find the factory paperwork? I cannot reply to this question with precision. Try Anna Vorlberg's office above the machine floor. Okay, that is actually kind of helpful, so... When you are complete and totally functional, can you help me gather information about Hans Vorlberg? I'm afraid I can't, Kate Walker. Duty calls. Once I've recovered my feet, I have to see to my post on the train. It's waiting for its engineer. Okay. Where is this train, anyway? Does the name Hans Vorlberg mean something to you? Of course. He created me. But I'm sorry to say that I am yet to meet my maker. Have you any idea where he might be right now? No, Kate Walker. But I am sure I would experience great metaphysical satisfaction in his presence. Most people are happy they haven't met their maker. 
You said you were a train engineer? What train would that be? But, Kate Walker, you have not seen the magnificent train waiting at the station? And where is that train going, Mr. Oscar? The train is going far away. Very, very far away indeed. Are you taking any passengers? My duty is to drive the train. Above all, to avoid delays. An engineer prides himself on punctuality. I will agree with you, though, Kate Walker, that a train without passengers is hardly a train at all. You haven't answered my question. For further details, please consult Anna Vorlberg. That may be a bit hard. And no, we haven't seen the train. We haven't even seen the station. Um, yeah, I'm sure he knows about Momo. Do you know Momo? No, Kate Walker. Fair enough. You are a very strange robot. Automaton, if you please. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to offend you. Automatons have an additional soul auxiliary, you understand? Uh, I think so. Um, automatons have a soul? Well, I guess they have a Jesus, according to the church, so why not? Has it been a long time since you last saw Anna Vorlberg? 72 hours, 32 minutes, and 20 seconds, to be precise. This regrettable absence explains the delay in my production process. Anna Vorlberg is dead, Mr. Oscar. What do you mean by the notion of death, Kate Walker? Broken. Disactivated. Worn out. Damaged. Unplugged. Oh, that really is most bothersome. I'd rather counted on finishing my production. Okay. I'm afraid it will be a somewhat long delay. Can I be of use to you? Why, you certainly can. I absolutely must have my feet. My hands are model XZ2003. My feet are model XZ2005 underscore B. Be careful. The model XZ2005 underscore A has evidenced some rather embarrassing performance failures. Like bugs? Automatons do not have bugs, Kate Walker. They simply display functional idiosyncrasies. I'm sorry, I didn't know. What do I have to do to get you a pair of feet? Use the assembly line to construct them. You will need a production punch card, on which is recorded my body design data. Here is my own punch card. Okay, I'll give it a go. Thank you, Kate Walker. I guess we could look into getting him some feet. Don't really know why we need to do that. He already said he can't really help us find anything in the factory, which presumably is all Kate is interested in at this point. But I guess if we happen to spot anything uh, we can do, we can try it. Oscar, I am delighted to have met you. See you again soon, I hope. Yes, Kate Walker. Okay, well, I guess we'll have to check out the rest of the factory in the next video.